Some of the things we've been working on in our dynamic body project with Mr. Hayes here is just keeping him in the game. This is a hungry competitor. This man is putting in the work. We have a fight coming up. When's your next fight? Uh, it's going to be like January 14th. January 14th. It's going to be where? At the Hard Rock Live, right? Yeah, Hard Rock Casino for a lot of them. Man, you're going to see me there. You're going to see this man there. We're going to rock out. He's going to come out and get the W. But the big thing to be able to get the W for this young man is consistency in training, being able to get into the gym and do the lifting, being able to put in the time and do the jujitsu training, do the sparring training, do the wrestling training. You know, he has a lot of tools to his tool belt, but with this impact, this this uh, you know, this is a, a traumatic sport that he participates in, we get injuries, we get sprains and strains, aches and pains. So it's my job just to help dial in his nutrition, help dial in his his range of motion, his stability, his strength. And so a lot of times people wait until they're injured to come in. We've been working throughout you know, the last four months on keeping him injury free as much as possible. We do have things that flare up, or most recently uh, a plantar strain, something pretty minor. But we've been using a lot of ART. Today we're gonna work some Graston technique. I use the rock blade, um, just a, a variation in tools. And we're gonna do a lot of stability and impact work with him because we wanna make sure we load this plantar fascia, we load this lower extremity, and help recover those tears that we have as we put down that scar tissue, we wanna start stretching it out. So you're gonna see a couple of the exercises that I have this young man doing, um, and we'll just kinda of go from there, so hold tight. So what we're having Mr. Hayes do here is a gastroc or a calf stretch. Now, some keys that I'm going to point out for this. We're holding these stretches for about 60 seconds. I like to give the muscle time to recover. What I'm going to have Mr. Hayes do, I want you to feel this heel kick out, kick out, kick out, and drive it down. So we're trying to keep this square. Now, all of this, we keep it fully extended, the knees fully extended. He's feeling it big through the gastroc right here, a little bit through the Achilles. You might get some pinching through this tibiotalar joint, common to experience that. We don't want to rock too much. What I want you to feel is these hips slowly glide forward and hold that. That's how we tension. If your heel starts coming off the ground, we're just going to back off tension slightly, or we're going to drive through the wall to push that heel down, and we're going to hold it for 60 seconds. So now we're going to work something called the soleus stretch. It's very similar to the gastroc. Again, we wanna make sure that we square that foot up, but now we're gonna target that Achilles and soleus. So what I want you to do, I want you to drive that knee past the toes. Don't let it go inside. We don't wanna see that knee break down inside the toe. We wanna to make sure we keep it over the feet, over the foot, and drive, drive, drive. Hips sink down, down, down. We're loading this joint. Big through the Achilles, deep in that soleus there. Hold that spot. Now. One thing you will feel is a lot of pinching through here, a big load through the quads. I don't want you to drive your knees past your toes whenever you're squatting typically. For this mechanic here, I want to load a specific structure. So whenever we go to squat, we're not going to allow that knee to lead the way and then hinge back. That puts a big shear. But to take out the gastroc, the big calf, and to be able to give him the ability to get those deeper flexors and that soleus, that's why we're driving this knee over the toe. Short staggered stance, we hold for 60 seconds. We're gonna incorporate some light impact today. Now, this is a ladder drill uh, that is progressive, so we're gonna do something called 25, 50, 75, 100. Whenever we work these drills, 25% is all based on stability and control. So the first exercise I'm going to have you do, Mr. Hayes, we're going to be on our toes the whole time. We're going to step like we're running, but we're going to hold it. We hold, we hold, hold, hold. Good control. Don't collapse the foot. Opposite arm, opposite knee. Try to get it up to parallel, just like we're running a sprint. We hold for that pause, and then we move forward. Good. Hold. Excellent. So as we see this, we can see James is flat on his feet right now, but it's still a fight for balance. Now 
Am I going to force him to go all the way up on his toes? Not yet. I'm going to let him get a feel for it. Just walk. No jumping yet. So you see him wanting to hop a little, a little faster to get, to get through that because it's a lot harder to hold and control to the switch and get your foot back down on something that's solid and firm. So we're going to do another set of 25. This is the hardest exercise. If I ask him to go 100%, he looks like a, an all-star quarterback or free safety because it's more natural. He's trained that mechanic his whole life. This time around, instead of being flat-footed, let's stay on the balls of the feet, the toes the whole time, and that's where we hold. Hold nice and tall. We don't have to look down. Our chest is up. Our head is up. We hold. Hold. Hold, hold all the way down. Really good calf, so gastroc, flexors, soleus, Achilles loading. Really good exercise. Good, that's okay. You're going to get loss of balance, control, strong core. Good, look at him adapt. We're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to do two feet each square. Now, one thing we see is whenever it gets hard, we tend to lose our position. So towards the end of that exercise, James was on the yellow versus the center of the square. It's just awareness of where he is. He's kind of bailing on one side. You see him failing to the right. And so we're going to challenge that. But now we give him time to recover in the square. Tall posture, head up. We don't have to look at the ground. We know where it is. We're going to step Step. So two feet in the same square, and then we move forward. Still working the paws. This is breaking our momentum. So instead of being able to just move forward, every time we move forward, boom, but then we have to stop and put the foot down and re-go again. I'm going to lead with my right leg down. I'm going to lead with my left leg back. After you. Good. Beautiful. Control. Take the time. Now we're going to work lateral movements. So with this, again, we're being an athlete here. We want to make sure that we keep our chest up, our heads up. We never want to get into a poor position as we're being athletic. So this stays tall. We know where the ground is. For beginners out there, face a mirror. It will help you know where you are in space. James, what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you stand right here. Now, we're just going to take big lateral steps. We're going to hold, touch, and hold. Big reach to the left. Just like we're running with our arms, but don't come up and come down. Now you have nowhere to get into the square. So you want to make sure you hold and you reach. Take your time on those toes. Now what I'll have him do is he comes back, he's going to face the same way so he can hit the right side. There's no need to turn around and go do the same side twice. Good. Reach, reach, reach. So these exercises have been geared to really work a few things. We're working our impact, but more importantly we're working lower extremity control. Where our leg is in space. So we don't get that excessive pronation, that valgus knee. We don't collapse under any type of athletic condition because, again, he's putting his body in some funny, funky position sometimes. So we need to have that lower extremity control. This is a great posterior chain exercise because we're being very athletic and holding that position. We're also getting impact. We're feeling our foot hit the ground. This is a mild impact because we're doing the 25% range. Now, the next drill we're going to work is called moguls. It's very similar to what you'd see the guys and gals skiing down the hill where they move their, their hips, their knees, and their skis back and forth really quick. This is still a 25% drill today, though. We're going to start with one foot in the square. 
good athletic position on the balls of the feet, and we're just going to hop forward and to the left. Good control. Same thing to the right. What I don't want to hear, we land softly, absorb the shot, let the hips go back and be what braces you. Don't let the knees do all the work. Common mistake, we get really big with our base too. We're athletes, we're tight, we're strong. Yep, hop forward and just catch it in square. Beautiful. Control. Square. Yes. So if you guys notice, look at James' feet as he lands. They're kind of out at a 30 degree angle, 35 degree angle. His natural instinct is that that, that pronation where he drops that navicular, his feet are rolling into each other, the medial malleole, I want to kiss. Whenever he walks, he stands. And we want to look at the ankle. We know that that's a problem. But we're also going to look up the chain. We want to look at the connective tissues of the knee pulling that tibia out. And we also want to climb the chain, the IT band, the vastus lateralis, the biceps for more short and long head, and into the external rotators of the hip. Because we know the external rotators externally rotate the hip. So if these are tight, this is going to be a common position we get in. And then over time, we develop this as the new norm. Now we're talking sciatica, we're talking degeneration, we're talking susceptibility to injury under load, under trauma, under some type of physical combat activity. So that's why we want to pay attention. Are we going to change James today? Are we going to make it completely different? No. This is stuff that we work on day in and day out every time we're in the office to improve. And then he takes this to his gym sessions and he takes it on his own accord to be more self-aware. The more aware he becomes, the better athlete he becomes. When, when I keep my, my feet straight, but my knees are touching. So that is a great point. I'm glad you pointed that out. Let's stand at the ladder and let's begin our first mogul. So put one foot in and hop. And pause. Let's go back to the start and do it again. Let's jump just one square instead of two. Got excited for us, guys. Pause. So we can see here, again, history takes over. These muscles have a history of doing this mechanic. His knees do want to valgus in. And that's because he's not engaging those glutes on the posterior chain. You have to open it up and open it up. Now, you feel much more back here tension, right? Much more stable pelvis. This is important whenever we're under the bar squatting. This is how we stabilize that low back. Now, stand up out of this position. Check his feet. We're still flared out. So square your feet. Keep your feet flat and create torsion. So exactly, twist that. That is a much stronger position. His foot still wants to go out because we lack the ankle mobility right now to achieve what we would consider good, proper position. That's why we work on it, guys. It doesn't change overnight. We don't turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger with one lifting session, and we don't have perfect biomechanics after one session of training. We have to work with what we have, constantly think about it. Great question. And now we're going to be more aware. So instead of landing like this or like this, we're gonna land like this. We're gonna keep this, I, my butt's engaged, my knees are out, I feel the tension on the outside. Just like our golf swing, you feel that hard tension on that hip as you swing through. And we're just gonna square, 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 nice and light. Look at your position, James. How's your feet look? Much better. But we still see the collapsed arch here. We see a lot of tension through here. So we know that the structure's breaking down a little bit. His feet want to go flat. So now we're going to work an exercise called short foot. This is a great stability exercise. It's very similar to an isometric, how we're going to hold it because we're going to activate, shorten the muscles and hold. And it's also dynamic mobility. We're training a proper range of motion, good muscle activation, good neurology up and back. We're relaying that path, that circuit. So training awareness of the foot. We're going to keep our foot flat on the ground, and what I want you to feel is yourself pull it up. Hold, so pull, hold one, two, three, four, five, and relax. Now let's square our feet up a little closer together and do both at the same time. And pull, keep the toes down, two, three, four, five, and relax. That's one, again, one, 
two, three, four, five, and relax. So we're seeing great arch support here. Go, one, two, keep the ball of the foot down, three, four, five, and relax. Again, one, two, three, four, five, and relax. And this is how we can promote that good arch support, that proper position, good ankle hinge. What we're gonna do, we're gonna work on this man's foot, but we know that the plantar fascia through here and the top of his foot is what's been irritated most recently, the outside, this kind of, this part right here. But we're gonna go and we're gonna hit the peroneal stay and do a little bit of mobility through the ankle with ART, the active release. And then we're going to rock blade this tissue here just to try and break up some of the adhesions, increase the circulation, and help pump out some of the toxins in those tissues. All the way down and out, up and in. And you feel that through here. So we can see that with the shortening of these peroneals wrapped around this lateral malleolus, we're getting some irritation up here, and I believe that's because he's been modifying his gait, how he's been walking, to avoid the irritation. While he's training, he doesn't feel too bad, but first thing in the morning is really irritated, and then you know every now and then he feels it whenever he tweaks it or twists a little bit, and then in the evening time after a lot of activity. So that's why we don't just chase the, the discomfort, the pain, the achiness. We gotta treat the unit. work those ligaments around the lateral malleolus today. So this is the rock blade. Grasson had the patent for so long um, now they have allowed, you know, the patent went up and so many other companies have invested. Um, I really like the Rock Blade because it's heavy, it has good weight to it, but it's kind of an all-in-one tool. With my Grasson set that I used to have, you know, I had 10 tools with that that I had to pick and choose between. It is a little bulky, but if you, you use it a little bit, you, you try it on yourself, you experiment, it becomes just like a... a an extension of your hand and you can work the finest little tissue or we can get you know really big gross tissue if we want to just depends on how you work with it what your goals are I use this rock rub <laughs> it's just a type of cream it's designed it's a little greasy just to, to help you glide across the tissues you're gonna watch this man jump because he does every time we do the bottom of the foot. It's gonna tickle, but we'll desensitize him, and as he desensitizes, we will pick up the intensity. I'm gonna have to pull it back. We're gonna put this just loosey goosey now on my leg. So we do it deliberate. We just lay it down deliberate. Giggle, giggle, giggle. You see him laughing now, but it won't last long. <laughs> now you see I have full dorsiflexion and toe extension. I'm taking these tissues to the max to desensitize him. To make it a little easier, we can take it off. Still no fun, but not near as painful, right? Tickles. <clears throat> and we just go between the big tension and not. I want him to not be super sore. I want to get some good work in and we're just targeting different structures. So we're working more than just the bottom of the foot, we're hitting all the tissues because if we have an injury on the bottom of the foot, we want to make sure we cover the entire unit we're not focused on just the pain, but if these muscles are tight, these muscles are gonna be tight. The joint's gonna be less stable, more stable, guarded, less movement in there. You know, really anything's possible depending on your injury. So you treat the surrounding tissues, the full unit.
But as you guys can see, no longer wiggling like we were. It does desensitize, it doesn't feel good, but at the same time, it, it, it's not such an extreme sensation that he can't handle the entire time. Every so often we do get people that the first session or two, they're jumping around the whole time. Now, the difference is next time we come back and we actually do the rock blade, it won't be near as difficult. The body adapts quickly, especially if we stay consistent. So that's something that this young man's great at. Mr. Hayes is very consistent with his treatment, his training, his diet, his exercise, and that's why he's doing so good at, at, in MMA. You know, he's putting in the work. Hard work pays off, guys. Make sure you put it in. Like, what, what's making you progress and rise up the ranks like you are? I mean, uh, it, you gotta have a passion for it. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, our office. Our job is to go in there and fight. Um, our nine to five is octagon. So I mean, if you have a passion for it, if you have a passion for getting hit in the face, for hitting somebody in the face, then you won't, you won't love it. You won't love training. You won't. It's just you just won't be into it. And that's in that's a place you don't want to be. You want to find out that you're not into it in the fight, in the moment. You did a great job today. We grasped in the entire bottom of the foot. We did some ART around the lateral ligaments here, the lateral malleolus, and then we hit the peroneals. That's going to be it for his treatment session today, okay? Next time we come in, we'll reevaluate. I'm going to reevaluate. I'm going to see how he's performing, see those what deficiencies he has in his mechanics, and just go from there. So until next time, guys, have a good one. James, thanks for joining me today. Thanks Respect, you, man. man. See you guys later. We'll see you soon.